Is New World worth playing in 2023? That's the question we're going to be talking about today. Now I personally have spent nearly 2000 hours in this game, but I actually call myself rather casual because most of that time came very early on in the game's life. If you want to help me grow the channel, becoming a YouTube member is truly the best way or come and give me a follow over on Twitch, I occasionally stream. Okay, let's give a little bit of background on New World. New World was released in 2021 and it was met with mixed reviews. Some players really praised its immersive world, engaging gameplay and enjoyable combat, while others criticised it for its bugs, its exploits and the lack of end game content. Since then, the game has received numerous updates and the player numbers have generally grown in the last six months. Players are coming and going with each new update and I think that's a positive sign and that's to be expected with MMOs these days. So with all these improvements in mind, I want to take a look at New World and see if it's worth your time and money in 2023. Let's start with gameplay and leveling. New World is an MMO that combines a lot of elements from survival games, but is also combining that with a theme park sort of MMO. There's crafting, there's play versus player, combat, there's some good PvE expeditions. Expeditions are basically New World's five man dungeons, and players can choose to play solo or join a company. A company is a guild. You'll need to join a company if you want to participate in the end game PvP namely taking over territories and getting lots of gold. The world of New World is vast and now filled with a decent variety of creatures, something which wasn't quite true at launch. The combat in New World is action based and requires players to aim and dodge their attacks. The game also features a variety of different weapons which effectively determine your class and this leads to a variety of different playstyles, so there's generally something for everybody. Now originally leveling in New World was a little bit underwhelming and a lot of players felt that they hit a wall at about level 30. Thankfully they this has changed. Two zones have been completely reworked, Monarch's Bluff and Everfall, with Amazon Game Studios drastically improving the questing experience from level 1 to 25. The leveling experience from 25 onwards has been improved slightly. One of the key things that they have done there is that the total leveling XP required to get from 1 to 60 has been pretty much halved. It's also worth noting that questing is now the best way to level rather than doing town boards. I won't necessarily explain what town boards were, but they were quite boring for a lot of players. Two more zones are are scheduled for rework, these being Brightwood and Weaver's Fen. This will likely improve the leveling experience yet again from level 25 to about 45 I think. This is scheduled to happen in spring 2023, so if leveling is a major issue for you then do consider waiting. There's also been a few extra things added to New World over time that would affect your gameplay whilst leveling. There have been several weapons added to the game, so if the original lineup didn't really take your fancy, well, since launch, they have added the Void Gauntlet, the Blunderbuss, and the Greatsword. These are pretty much like new classes because of the diversity that they offer, so very much worth considering if that takes your fancy. There's also been tons of quality of life improvements. Storage sheds are all linked. Fast travelling is cheaper, so there's less running about. You can open your inventory while moving. There's way more stuff than just that, though. They are adding a way of managing your gear because, quite frankly, New World's gear management right now is a little bit frustrating and underwhelming but really new world systems have definitely improved and the game is less frustrating to play overall leveling is less painful more enjoyable and so much better than it was at launch let's talk about content and end game and we'll start with PvE, I think. One area where New World has received a lot of criticism in the past is its content and the end game. At launch, the game had a relatively small number of activities and content for the players to participate in. Everybody was basically just doing chess runs. However, since then, the game has received numerous updates, and this includes things like a new region, more quests, more expeditions, and other content like PvP Arena, a music profession, and much more. The end game of New World is now so much better than it was at launch. For example, the expertise system, which was previously called the high watermark gear score, has been reworked. It is now much simpler and much speedier to progress through. This system is basically the first one you will experience when you hit level 60. You essentially have a score for each slot of gear and you need to level that up. Only when that is maxed will you be able to make full use of max gear score items. Once you've done that you'll be able to progress to 625 gear score which will enable you to do mutations or not have any disadvantages in PvP. Mutated expeditions are similar to WoW's Mythic Dungeons I believe. This is currently the main PvE end game for New World. Now I won't go into much detail here but it is a fun way to progress for those interested in PvE. While I do have my own issues with the system, mainly I think the existence of war gear for each enemy type and expedition is a little bit like frustrating, I do think that there's a good amount of content for PvE players to enjoy. There are seven mutatable dungeons, with two being available at any given time. They've also added a group finder which will make it easier for players to find each other and to play with. There are more things that you can do PvE wise, there's chest runs, there's corrupted portals and so forth, but personally I think expeditions are where the majority of the content is. But 
let's move on to gathering and crafting. Now the gathering and crafting in New World was always one of its standout features. The gathering especially in New World is very nice. The exceptional sound design and fantastic environmental details really make this area of the game shine. The actual crafting is good up until max level in my opinion where I believe it is let down by one main issue and that is the existence of gamble crafting. Essentially RNG is the way that the game stops you from getting best in slot pieces of gear very easily and this means you will waste a lot of resources trying to craft these pieces of gear if that's something you participate in. A lot of people simply choose not to engage in this because it is so random and will instead try to get their gear from the open world, expeditions and so forth. Now I do need to talk about Brimstone Sands. Brimstone Sands was a new level 60 zone that was added in October 2022. However this zone is incredible and while the quests and rewards are certainly worth doing for a fresh level 60, Brimstone Sands mainly brought optimism to New World, primarily because of its quality, stunning visuals and better storytelling. The storytelling has been improved. At launch apparently there was a story but it was very poorly told in my opinion, whereas it is now being told visually. This applies especially in the rework from levels 1 to 25. There's actually cutscenes and things like that and there are also cutscenes in Brimstone Sands. So the story is being improved. I think if you want a full proper story in an MMO you'll probably want to see all of the levels reworked from levels 1 to 60 but it is an area that is getting better. Now let's talk about the PvP endgame. The war system in New World is relatively unchanged. It has been opened up a little bit by the implementation of a war cooldown. You can now do one attacking war and one defending war a day but this is a relatively small number of elite players all vying for territory control so that they can get lots of gold. Not much has really changed here but a rework to territory influence is scheduled in the future. Outpost Rush and PvP Arena is where the majority of players will do their PvP. Outpost Rush is New World's version of a battleground, 20 versus 20, and is mostly enjoyable depending on how many muskets players there are. Recently, it was changed so that your gear score will be scaled up to 600 in these. This means that if you enter as a fresh level 60 and your gear score is perhaps 500, you will now be scaled up to 600. You will eventually still want to get good gear. This basically makes it so that you can progress through PvP once you hit level 60. You do get some chests of goodies if you complete an outpost rush, for example. PvP Arena is a 3v3 battle and you can queue solo and you'll be put against other solos. Personally, I think these smaller PvP battles are where New World really shines and I personally enjoy these matches quite a lot even if I lose which does happen more often than not. We now need to talk about the PvP reward track. This system is trying to reward you for participating in PvP. It's a nice idea, it's good but it has a main drawback in my opinion and that is that the items are again mostly random. You cannot control what you're going to get when you're going to get it. You can get very good items to it but it is random when you will get it. New World sort of feels like it wants to reward you through PvP but never quite commits to the idea. In my opinion the end game of New World will be looked down upon until two main things happen. First I think we will need to see ranked PvP because that will then really show who the best players truly are and who the worst players are like myself. Secondly we need PvE raids. Now we know one 20 man boss is coming in summer and I think that this will make the end game feel like it's complete for a lot of players. Obviously one raid will have to be the first of many if the game is to compete with games like World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy but at least we know it is starting and that they are coming. There's no better time to prepare than now if that's something you're interested in. The end game though is now much better than when New World launched. I think a lot of players can get a lot of enjoyment from New World. The future of New World is currently a little bit in question though. Now this is mainly because the recent roadmap only shows the next six months and many people think that there isn't too much content on it even though it does actually include a new expedition and a new raid. However one of the developers Scott Lane did confirm that a major bit of content is scheduled to be released at the end of 2023. This will likely be in the same vein as Brimstone Sands if not bigger potentially hinting at a paid expansion. However it was way too early for them to provide any details. So is New World worth playing in 2023? Personally I would say yes. While the game was off to a rocky start it has come a long way since its release and it is so much better now. Do I think the game is perfect? No. I make quite a few videos where I pick apart some of the gameplay but the game is on the right trajectory and I think that's actually very important. If you're not playing anything else right now, maybe you're not interested in World of Warcraft, Throne of Liberty is coming out in the future, Ashes of Creation is coming out in the future, maybe you want something to play till then, well I think New World is a really good option for you. It's buy to play so once you've bought it you don't have to keep stressing about playing every month because there's no sub fee or anything like that and really it's fantastic value for what you pay. The amount of hours you can put into it to the amount of money that you actually give to New World, I think it's really really good for New World. It's a bit hard to answer the question should you play it in 2023. If you're a new player and you never experienced it before I would say definitely give it a try. If you've played it and you're possibly thinking about coming back, well I'll be surprised if you didn't come back for fresh but I 
I actually think a lot of your issues might be solved. However, if you're one of those players who played fresh and you're now sort of like moving away from the game because there's not much content for three months, then I would suggest to you guys come back in three months. So it really depends on your situation is what I'm saying. But personally, New World is much better than it was. I think it just won an award at the MMORPG website saying it was the most improved MMO of 2022. And it's really hard to deny that. Does that make it an amazing MMO? No, but I think you can get a lot of enjoyment from it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you want to support the channel, becoming a YouTube member is the best way. Or as I said, give me a follow over on Twitch. I'll stream at some point, I'm sure. What you should definitely do though is have a most beautiful day. Like and subscribe. Goodbye.